How an FM radio works can be a tough concept to understand, even though it's a common technology we often take advantage of. My name is Scott, and I'm an engineer at National Instruments. And today I'm going to teach you how to use LabVIEW and an NIUSRP 2920 to build an FM radio and to understand the mechanics of broadcast FM. FM stands for frequency modulation and is the process of taking a message signal, such as music, and transforming it into an RF signal. Let's take a look at the hardware that we will use to acquire this RF signal. This is the NIUSRP 2920. It's a very flexible RF transceiver, which means that it can receive and transmit signals. In this example, we will configure this to receive or acquire the RF signal uh, that is reserved for broadcast FM. That signal comes in through this antenna, is down converted, and then digitized into IQ samples. Those IQ samples are sent over gigabit ethernet to the PC for processing. On the PC, the IQ samples are acquired by LabVIEW. We're using LabVIEW because we can create a virtual instrument or VI where we can customize a front panel to configure the NIUSRP 2920. As you can see here, this is my front panel in which I am searching for radio stations. Each one of these bumps that you see here are local radio stations and are shown down as detected stations. Let's go ahead and zoom in on a portion of the spectrum. What I'm showing here are the frequencies at 93.3 megahertz, 93.7 megahertz, and 94.7 megahertz. If the radio station was sending a tone at 94.7 megahertz, all we would see is a single spike here. But the RF energy spans across multiple frequencies because this is where the frequency modulated audio is residing. So we want to be able to modulate this signal. Uh, and so to do so, we're going to bring up another VI. This is the block diagram or the code that LabVIEW uses to configure the NIUSRP 2920 and demodulate the FM signal. Looking at the front panel, we can now configure it to look at the 94.7 megahertz, as well as set the sampling rate at 200 kilosamples per second, which gives us a 100 kilohertz bandwidth. Um, that bandwidth is standard for broadcast FM. Now that it's configured, let's run this VI. And we can see sound now is coming in through the NIUSRP 2920 and playing on my speakers. Let's go ahead and turn off the sound now so we can focus more on what's going on. These samples are shown in this top graph as the time domain waveform. The bottom graph shows the frequency domain where each of the different frequencies that are coming in as a frequency deviation um, is shown on this graph in real time. It may look like a bunch of noise, but it contains some very significant information. Let's go ahead and turn on some averaging, just so we can see, get a better idea of what's going on. And if all goes well, we're going to be able to see an image very similar to the theoretical spectrum for broadcast FM that's seen here. I'm also going to turn on some cursors so that we can section this out and see if the sections match up to this theoretical image. So as we can see, it matches up pretty well, where we have our mono section in the beginning, where we have 15 kilohertz of information. And that 15 kilohertz is the actual audio that our ears can hear. The next section is the 19 kilohertz pilot tone um, that is used to separate the stereo audio as well as other information. The next section is that stereo audio where it's the left audio with the right audio subtracted out. And using this section, we can actually combine it with a mono section to get our separate left and right audio channels. The next section is the RBDS signal, which contains the text information about the song that you're listening to um, and can be seen on things like modern car radios. With 100 kilohertz of bandwidth, there's a lot of information contained in the FM spectrum, and there's a whole lot more to explore. In fact, we don't even have to stop with analog modulation. You can even use the NIUSRP 2920 for digital modulation, such as binary shift keying, and quadrature amplitude modulation. So with the power of LabVIEW and the NIUSRP 2920, 
we can really maximize our understanding of these cuff concepts.